Joining me on the program is the president and founder of the United States Concealed Carry Association, Tim Schmidt. How you doing? Hey, Andrew, I'm doing great. Uh, thanks for having me on the show today. Hopefully I can uh, add some value. You know, it's, you know, what sucks for me is you have you have my colleagues like Mark Levin, you know, talk, you know, d- doing doing advertisements for your group. I can't because I live in the People's Republic of New Jersey. <laughs> I, I mean, I can talk about how good your organization is. I just can't say that I'm a member of it because getting concealed carry, you know, getting concealed carry in New Jersey. I mean, you know, you might you have to give an organ. <laughs> Pledge of firstborn. Um you know, we have I was reading over one New York Times op ed piece after another. And yesterday we had one by Charles Blow. And it was amazing. He was kind of sniffing at the idea that lowly common folk could possibly ever defend their own lives or property with a mm. firearm. That really all we are is a bunch of ignorant people with an accident waiting to happen. And that's kind of a nauseating way to look at the American people and their relationship with guns. Well, especially, Andrew, when you look at the you know, United States Department of Justice study shows that, that, that responsibly armed Americans, private citizens, use guns a million and a half times per year to stop crimes like rapes and murders and assaults. And so I'm not sure what he's referring to because it happens all the time. You know, it's also really, really sickening. And, you know, when we think about concealed carry, right? What's amazing about your group or the NRA or, you know, any, any any organization dedicated to protecting people's Second Amendment rights, when they talk about when we're we're accused or you're accused of of looking the other way with when there's a, a mass murderer or a, an act of terrorism, that this is something that we we've just made peace with. Uh, it's like, are you kidding me? Well, every organization that is, that has involved itself in fight safety first. You go to it's like it's like the people that are reporting on this stuff have never been to a gun range, never actually dealt with an NRA instructor or talked to someone at, at the USCCA or what have you. They just assume that w- we'll tolerate anything, which is totally untrue. Law abiding, responsible gun owners preach safety first, muzzles down range, actions open, mm-hmm. all this stuff. Guns away from kids, put it in the safe. Make sure you're please, for the love of God, don't let your kids get near your guns. And no matter how many how how much we know, this is what is taught and pounded into people's heads. They still believe that we promote irresponsibility. Yeah, and they act as if we don't care. It's impossible to lead an organization of, of nearly 300,000 people and not have some connection to, to, to massacres. So I guarantee you, whether it's an employee, whether it's one of my members, you know, there was family on the ground there. So, of course, that hurts me. And, and, and the fact that, that they say those things, just like you explained, is just nauseating. Well, I, it's, it's, it's amazing. What do you say? You know, this is this is something that we, we point out a lot. That most of us can't afford armed bodyguards, right? We don't. We don't have private security. Um, maybe there are security guards where you, where you work, right? Or you know, in the building you work in, or in the parking garage, or something. But most of us are not protected on an hourly basis by private security. And when you have right. Hollywood celebrities and the late night comedians, really, it's not the bump stock that they're angry at. They they really believe that common people should not be able to protect their own lives with a firearm, but they are surrounded by arm. Even Jimmy Kimmel, it was announced in the San Jose Mercury News this week that he's doubling down on, on his bodyguards. Well, is his life more important than yours or mine? Or is that celebrity's kids more valuable than mine or yours? When did when did we become the aristocrats versus the masses with this stuff. Yeah, well, it's, it's been happening slowly over over many years, Andrew, and and and, and you couldn't be more right. It's, it's I mean, all these people that come out and say that all oh, guns are are for the just the, the flyover states who don't really understand anything. You know, they do have the armed guards, and 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 honestly, I believe that they do think that their lives are more important. Y six six ninety five Patriot nine five seven two eight seven four. So while we got you here, if, if anyone that doesn't know what your organization is and what it does, why don't you explain it? Sure, yeah. So the USCCA, United States Concealed Carry Association, we are one of the fastest growing firearm safety organizations in the country. We do education, we do training, and we provide firearm liability insurance. So all of our members, we have all sorts of of training resources online. We have hundreds, I'm sorry, we have thousands of instructors all across the country, and every single one of our members is covered by an insurance-backed liability policy to make sure they have the best attorney, and the best expert witnesses and the best chance of surviving a courtroom 
and they're in a situation where they're forced to use their gun. You know what? And that's that's something I've I've always I've always shared by myself. I concealed carry uh, when I lived in in West Virginia. And well, look, as they used to say jokingly, that if you if, up north they say, "Why did you shoot him?" and down south they say, well, "What did he do to get shot?" That that there are you 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 might you might know that you were in a self defense situation. And there's there might be a crusading prosecutor doesn't give a damn if you were totally within within the right and within the law. They're going to come after you that, they, you know, if God forbid, and we hope it never happens. Right. We, we hope that your members never have to ha- ever have to use any of your services. But if it does, right. you realize that once you defend, it's not over because Oof. it's not over because you've saved your own life. I mean, it's not over. No, it's, it's actually just the beginning. I mean, we're talking about grand jury proceedings. We're talking about even spending the night in jail, you know, trying to uh, get bail together so you can get back with your family, let alone the nightmare of, of, of a civil lawsuit. I mean, it, I got to tell you that one of the most gratifying things in my life is to help my members. Granted, it's a small percentage of them, but they literally changed their lives because they would have either gone bankrupt or wound up in jail for doing something that you and I would do in a heartbeat. Which is like protecting your own family. Exactly. So while while I got you here, um, bump stocks. Until five minutes ago, nobody in the media even knew what a bump stock was, and now they want it to be made illegal. Now in this in this day and age where you have three D printing and YouTube videos, you can pretty much make you could you could pretty much convert a semi automatic weapon to fully automatic if you're willing to go that far and, and break the law. Um, of course, you know there are many people who say bump stocks aren't aren't are, aren't a good thing because they aren't uh, they they aren't easy to control. That you you kind of it kind of makes the weapon. Yes, it it increases the rate of fire through a through a, an accessory, not a modification, but it also makes the gun less safe. So we can we can have that argument till we're blue in the face. But mm-hmm. I think any every one of us knows that the Pelosi's and the Schumer's of the world aren't going to be satisfied if the NRA and USCCA and Jews for the Preservation of Firearms Ownership and Gun Owners of America come to the table and say, look, you know what? Uh, we agree with you that this thing is an is an unsafe way to accessorize a firearm. Um, we're gonna we're gonna agree to a regulation that makes it illegal. First of all, I don't think that's gonna change anything. But what I know in my heart of hearts, it's not gonna it's not gonna satisfy the Democrats' appetite for infringing on the Second Amendment. Yeah, they'll just get a taste and they'll keep going for more. And you're right; it will not make one hill of beans a difference. The whole call for banning the bump stocks is all about an emotional knee-jerk reaction. And here's a kind of an interesting point, Andrew. Think about this. Just the fact that it's been brought up that, hey, we should ban these bump stocks. Well, guess what's happened? Thousands and thousands of them have been sold in the last couple of days because people are afraid they're going to go away. So it, it literally completely backfired on, on the anti-gun folks. Now there's even more of these things out there, and they'll never go away. Once you make something illegal. <laughs> well, do you remember in the laws. 90s? Do you remember in the 90s a thing called the Hellfire Kit? Sure. Yeah, right. Uh, you don't need a bump stock. You need a spring that sits behind the trigger that can be easily installed and removed. This is and this is what these people who run around saying military grade weapons don't understand. First of all, military grade weapons are not available in the civilian market. And if you want to get fully automatic, you have to go through the federal you know, jump through the federal loopholes and get yourself a tax stamp, which your entire life is going to be exposed to the federal government and very few people have a tax stamp, many for that reason. That these Correct. people that are walking around acting like there are just bazaars and flea markets where people are walking out with cases of military grade fully automatic weapons and and you know again this is is like some fantasy that they have that is totally untrue. Yeah, yeah, you're you're exactly right. And so much of this fantasy stems from their complete lack of understanding of of even the technology or the or the, the nomenclature of of what th- this equipment is. You know, and, and, you're, and you're right. The only way to get a fully automatic machine gun is if you buy one that was made before 1986, go through the, go through the whole Class 3 uh, program, which means you have to sit down with a sheriff and, and get an interview, which, of course, no one's going to do. So, so it's, 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 it's all grounded in just willful misunderstanding, and they don't even care. All right, I got to leave it there. Uh, give out the website for, uh, for people that are interested that don't live in the People's Republic of New Jersey. Of course, there's all sorts of free information at uscca.com, and uh, great place to get started. All right, thanks for joining us yet again. Take care. All right, 1-866-95-PATRIOT, 957-2874. All right.